Wow, what a strange topic, am I right? Why Why are you even talking about this? Why are you even making a video about this? It doesn't even make any sense. Probably because it's a topic that I actually care about a lot. So a few days ago, I was just scrolling through Twitter, and then I read something from TSM Daquan, who said, <coughs> Fuck the zoo. Imagine being locked in your bedroom for your entire lifespan with absolutely nothing to do. Couldn't help but feel so sad seeing how bored all the animals were. At least my friends are fun, so I had a good time, but I ain't ever going again. Fuck SeaWorld 2. Now, after reading this, I was already a tad bit upset because this is a large personality. You know, this guy's got 1.6 million followers on Twitter alone. Who's saying this to his fan base of impressionable kids about something that really isn't even that bad bad. But what made me the most upset was that he was talking about the San Diego Zoo, which is ridiculous because the San Diego Zoo is arguably one of the best zoos and organizations that help with the conservation of wildlife in the fucking world. Like the zoos that you constantly hear about are like the Bronx Zoo in New York, Bush Gardens, Australia Zoo, the, the, you know, the one with like Steve Irwin and shit. And the San Diego Zoo. I mean, for fuck's sake, Animal Planet. Make, <laughs> they make a docuseries about some of the best zoos in the world and what they do to help, you know, conserve wildlife. And for this season, they are literally talking about the San Diego Zoo and the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. Just scrolling through the thread, it's like, it's so saddening. Seeing people who look up to this guy, who idolize this guy, they, they just kind of just agree with everything that he's says and it sucks because these establishments are so important to helping the world save the animals that are in it that are quickly dwindling and protecting them to make sure that they live for a very very long time and i feel like that when a lot of people hear the word zoo they quickly dismiss them as being cruel to animals but nowadays modern zoos are fucking awesome I mean, sure, back in the day, zoos were really bad and they were, you know, like mostly used as attractions to get humans into in order to make money. But then again, a lot of things were bad back in the days. Bro, doctors used to give people fucking cocaine. shit happens you know things change and right now is probably one of the best times that you can start supporting zoos that do a lot for conserving wildlife one of those establishments is the san diego zoo which is owned by the zoological society of san diego which is a non-profit organization that also owns the san diego zoo safari park and that's where i want to show how amazing these organizations can be what they can do and hopefully shed some light on some of the misconceptions that zoos are bad and should be shut down now, the safari park focuses on preserving the life of animals in places like Africa, which is why they have this huge enclosure where they have both endangered and not endangered animals live together in a space where they're protected and gain enrichment by having a habitat close to their ecosystem, and this is done throughout multiple exhibits around the park. And you'll see the same concept throughout a bunch of different zoos. That's why zoos will have animals that are endangered and animals that are stable. And they'll put them inside of the same type of enclosure so then that way, you know, they, they can have an enrichment of life as long as they are able to mingle around with those same types of animals. You know, you're not going to put a lion in the same room as you know a fucking zebra that 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 would be terrible even then something like these bald eagles are stable but they also can't fly because they were injured in the wild so then you have these animals as an ambassador so then you can help teach people what they're like in the wild and it's crazy because like the san diego zoo has one of the coolest exhibits where they have this huge huge aviary where a bunch of different species of birds fly around freely and just hang out and you could see them just like chilling with their with their kind and flying around and stuff and you could walk in and it's uh, it, it's absolutely beautiful and at the safari park they just opened up a wallaby exhibit that you can walk through without any cages there, there's no there's no fencing at all you just walk through and you can watch you know these animals just hanging out and doing their thing obviously you can't walk on the grass and stuff but like you can just walk the path and then see what these animals do without any kind of restrictions this is what modern zoos should be striving for and they are 
but you just have to find the ones that really do care. The thing is, is that zoos do a lot of good things. Like if you've read about this topic before, you've probably heard that the San Diego Safari Park helped save the Californian condor from going extinct when there was only like 22 or 23 of them in the wild. And then they brought them back to being above 400, which is fucking awesome. And okay, this, and this is actually a really big deal. The Safari Park has one of the largest frozen zoos in the world, which is where they collect animal sperm. Ew, gross, animal sperm. What the, what the, what the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah, it's actually awesome. They've been working on the tech to artificially inseminate animals in order to save them from extinction. In fact, they've been using this on the Southern White Rhino and the very first calf from them born from artificial insemination, which is historical, was just born this year. That is absolutely groundbreaking. And on top of that, it's also a huge step to genetically recovering the Northern White Rhino, which there are only two left in the entire fucking world and they're both females. So that's cool, especially when you consider that the reason why these animals are dying and going extinct in the first place is because of us, because of habitat loss and poaching. What if dot dot dot, zoos try grow population of some species and then release them back into the wild, dot dot dot. Some might die, but they will adapt over time. That's how humans can save what they fucked up. What the fuck? Let, like, b besides the fact that deforestation is a thing, let, let's just ignore the fact of how long it would take for these animals that we release back to the wild that are endangered or threatened, when we release them back into the wild in an environment that they don't understand how long it would take for them to evolve in order to understand that entire ecosystem now. Th those hundreds of years, ah, fuck it. In the meantime, let's just, let's just, let's just stick them out there and just hope that they survive. So when I was in school, uh, we learned about this thing where, uh, you know, we, you learn about wildlife biomes and uh, different ecosystems. And uh, we learned about this word called, I, I don't know, habitat fragmentation. It's this crazy thing where, that I'm gonna dumb down where basically we as humans have fucked up these habitats so much that if we were to take the animals that we saved from those ecosystems and put them back, they would go extinct. It, it's like if you took your food, right? And you then dumped a bunch of garbage on it saw that your food is probably fucked, so you took it out to make a new plate and then stuck it right back into the garbage. I'll also put a link in the description to a collection of case studies containing some of the reintroduction programs for wildlife that zoos and aquariums were a part of since 2010. You know, I know it's a big meme about, you know, the butterfly effect or chaos theory, but it's really true when it comes to wildlife. Every species is important to a habitat in order to make sure that the ecosystem works the way that it should. So when even just one species goes extinct, it can be extremely catastrophic to that entire environment. Vultures, which are now just dwindling into extinction, are a huge part of their habitat. They eat the carcasses of these animals that have died, which then gets rid of the bacteria that would have otherwise, you know, started to fester off of that animal spoiled meat and shit. You know, they eat the poo-poo. They are basically the cleaning supplies of, 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 of the wild. They're, they're basically the oxy clean of the wild. And if they go extinct, that's a huge hit just because of how much bacteria and disease is going to start developing inside of their ecosystem. When you think of the ecosystem of South Africa, you know, elephants, lions, hyenas, leopards, vultures are actually more key to that than most. They consume more meat than all the other scavengers and predators put together. Imagine you took that out of the equation. You're going to throw that whole ecosystem completely out of balance. Hey, fun fact Matt here. Did you know that 500 vultures died this year because they were eating the dead carcass of an elephant that was poisoned due to poachers with 22 of them being from a critically endangered subspecies? You know, I think that it would just be a great idea to let the remaining 5,000 just fly around and I don't know, Hope for the best. Bro, do you guys remember when bees were fucking dying? That shit was actually really scary. And now there's bees that are being placed on the endangered list. 
what the fuck they, you know because they were dying because of like some of the pesticides that we use on our uh, on our on our grass and shit if bees were to ever go extinct do you know how much that would actually fuck us there's so many plants out there that rely on bees that if bees were to die we, there would be so many plants that would just not exist anymore and when those plants don't exist animals can't eat them certain animals survive off of those plants it's just a domino effect of sh bad shit that can happen when a species goes extinct this entire time i've been wearing these headphones without they they i, I don't need them at all ah <sighs> So having zoos being able to protect these animals and breed them and so then one day we can hopefully bring them back into the wild is fucking awesome. Making sure that they don't just die off the face of the earth. Bruh. They had two bears in the zoo just because they had gone in someone's house before. Legit jail. Could have just moved the bears to somewhere else in the wild. Instead, they in some small ass box bored as fuck forever. Lame. For this one, let's let's we're, we're going to do a, just a quick something called a Google search. Now, just simply typing out bears in San Diego Zoo, we can find out that he's talking about the two grizzly bears, Scout and Montana, who were taught by their mother to start scavenging for food in human occupied areas. And it's not uncommon to read articles or find information about people who shoot these bears when they see them inside of their neighborhood. Which sucks because it's not the bear's fault for going over there. They don't understand borders. They don't understand boundaries. Unless, you know, it's it's marked off by another species' piss. <laughs> They're probably going to that area because we've destroyed the rest of the habitat. So they don't know where to go. And they found out that this is probably the most reliable way that they can get food and survive. So instead of having them get shot, we put them inside of a zoo to make sure that they're safe. Also, what the fuck, dude? You seem pretty upset that these animals aren't frolicking around and being entertaining for you. Just so you know, uh, you know, as a rule of thumb, the best time to go to a zoo when the animals are most active is during when the sun first rises to when the sun is about to set and on days when it rains because it's too fucking hot for them to be walking around and doing whatever they do during the daytime. So then they do it during the morning and during the nighttime and during the times when it rains. You know, when you go outside and you're like, God damn, it's really hot outside. I, I, I kind of want to go inside where there's AC. That's animals except all the fucking time and they don't have AC. You know, there's this crazy thing called plaques that zoos put in front of their enclosures you know those small little things that you know you kind of just ignore every once in a while where people really just don't read them at all they actually have a shit ton of information on them you'll find out some pretty nifty things like uh how lions which are threatened species usually rest for 20 hours out of the day only being active for about four hours like just look at any kind of documentary about animals and you'll see whenever they show an image of lions they're usually just laying down and not doing much because that's what they do it would be great if we could have a simple answer such as just taking an animal and putting them in a different part of the wild but the sad part is is that deforestation is a huge problem and like if we were to do that where the fuck are we gonna put them where the same shit isn't going to happen. Honestly, the last time that I went to the zoo, uh, <laughs> I saw the orangutans, and my answer to you right now would be some animals would be better if we let them become extinct. Not all zoos are bad, granted, but sometimes I think death would be a better option. <laughs> what? I, I just think that it's funny because like, have you guys seen an orangutan? They are not a, a happy looking species. They, they, they usually look really miserable. It's like they have a resting bitch face. On top of that, orangutans aren't really a social species. They kind of just like, like to be alone most of the time, unless they're with their kin. Whatever an orangutan is doing inside of a zoo is probably what they would be doing 
in the wild. Now, this was a tweet responding to someone that was saying something along the lines of, what the fuck else are they going to do? Run around the vast open world in their natural habitat with a ton of their other species. Run, jump, leap, and communicate with their people. Not just sit in a box with one or two others legit sleeping all day out of boredom. Bro, what the fuck do you think the wild is? You, you think animals are just frolic around like it's fucking Bambi and shit? Or they're just like doing sick moves and, and jives and shit? Uh, like, it, like, like it's fucking Madagascar? What the fuck? Almost half of the Amazon literally just burned down. What, we're just gonna put the animals back in there and be like, nah, man, y'all are good. It's fine. Here, have some fucking burnt wood. The thing is, I would love to have animals be in the wild like they should but the sad reality is that it's getting harder and harder for us to do that because of how much space we're taking up in the world i would love to be in places like singapore that adds vegetation into their buildings so people can coexist with the wild it's fucking dope but it's going to take years upon years upon years to even begin to start that type of evolution like i recently heard one of b's friends um talk about how uh, they were getting upset that coyotes were starting to get into the, his neighborhood and he was mad at the animals even though they just started building new housing next to them it's not that these animals want to be in your neighborhood it's it's literally just because we're destroying their habitat and they don't know what the fuck to do. A quick way to see if a zoo is taking care of their animals and if they really do care and they try their best to make sure that their lives are enriched and they, they have a good quality of life, their habitat is as close to the habitats that they can have in the wild, is to see if they are accredited by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, which is what the San Diego Zoo and the Safari Park are part of. Also all of these other fucking zoos and seeing as there are over a thousand zoos in america alone it's it's as simple as just going to the website and seeing if that zoo is accredited by the aza or not and is something that you should be supporting and i'll put that list in a link in the description uh below this video and this is also a really big problem with zoos have you noticed that there are zoos that are really really nice and then there are zoos that are not so nice being a part of the aza takes an incredibly long amount of time and it takes months of being monitored they need to have a council come out in order to make sure that your zoo is giving these animals what they need enriching their lives making their quality of life better making sure that the facilities that they have are good enclosures that are healthy and safe for the animals there's so much that you need in order to become aza accredited and once you do become aza accredited the doors open up for your zoo and really really doing your part and helping out with, con with with the conservation of wildlife you gain access to grants for your zoo you gain uh, uh access to the ssp which is the uh the 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 um survival no special species no it's fuck it's the uh uh species survival plan got it which which is fucking awesome this species survival plan is so good when a zoo is part of the ssp it, it, it basically means that they can network with other uh zoos that are part of the aza and that are part of the ssp program they can trade animals together with other zoos in order to make sure that the population of the species is correct they create this database of animals that are endangered that are threatened and keep track of their numbers what animals do well with other animals like if you you have one uh, giraffe here and another giraffe here it gives you like all the characteristics that one giraffe has versus the other characteristics that another giraffe has so then you can make sure that when they are put together they can breed well because they get along with each other it's like fucking tinder for animals it's awesome it's not just animals but also plants harvesting plants and trading the the, the food that you need in order to take care of these animals and trading them and, and and exchanging them and giving them to other companies that are within the aza and that are ssp you know giving them the resources that they need in order to take care of these animals you know you go to a nice zoo you see a bunch of animals but you know what else you also see a shit ton of plants botanical preservation Conservation is pretty big with zoos because different animals need different nutrients and different plants live in their ecosystem and because we 
were destroying their habitats that also includes hundreds of different plants that live there. For example, the SD Zoo is well known for the different species of bamboo that they grow. Like people actually come across the world that are botanical researchers and they look and study the bamboo that they have in their repertoire. You know, I'm just reading through this thread and I see that it has like 4,000 retweets, 34,000 likes, and I'm reading uh, the replies from people who are just like blindly agreeing with him. And it, and it just it just makes me really, really sad. You know, these YouTubers, these streamers, uh, they're, they're, they're all like these influencers and they readily call themselves social media influencers. That's what they're, that's what they're called. That's what I'm called. I'm a social media influencer. They, these influencers don't understand that what they're doing is influencing people. And when you say something like this, where it's like just a huge misconception and you have all these millions upon millions, thousands upon thousands of like these impressionable people that look up to them and idolize them and, and, and just take what they say and, and, and think that it's the correct thing. You know, when, when they get that information from them and, and, and something like this, it's just like, Fuck, dude, it really sucks. Like, even if you're watching this video right now, I don't want you to 100% agree with me. I want you to, to fucking to research this stuff. I want you to look it up yourself. I want you to do your part because there's so much information that I haven't even talked about with this specific topic. There's so much, but if I were to talk about all of it, this video would be like 50 minutes long. Like, research this stuff. Don't just take what I say for granted. Don't take what influencers say as like the bottom line. Challenge their ideas. Try to come up with your own opinions, you know? Because yeah, it's true. Zoos can be bad. They can be. There are plenty of zoos out there that are really bad for them. Like a lot of roadside zoos are bad. Uh, circuses are bad. I eat meat and that's bad. There's always going to be bad people destroying what the good people do. But that doesn't mean that we should look at the bad people and ignore all the good that the good people are doing. Like, we haven't even talked about sea life yet. I mean, like, Jesus Christ, dude. Like, the vaquita dolphin. Have you guys heard about the vaquita dolphin? That's just like, dude, they, look at these guys. Look at these boys. Look how cute they fucking are. They're fucking awesome. Too bad there's only like 30 left in the fucking wild. So it makes me incredibly happy and proud that San Diego Zoo Global it helped in making these these like underwater cameras that trigger whenever a vaquita dolphin uh, vocalizes so then we can track them down and save the species that is so fucking cool dude i didn't even know this you know have you guys ever seen this picture of a turtle like the turtles of a sea turtle's mouth you know that crazy ass like all these linings and shit so those linings are there for turtles so then um because like when they eat food underwater they swallow a bunch of water and so they literally barf up that water all the time. When they barf up that water, all the food that they've consumed would leave their mouth. But those little like pointy thingies, um, they help trap in the, the, the food that they've eaten. And then so then that way they just expel water, right? But then when they eat plastic, that's when it's bad because the, they can't throw it up because of like the, the, the shit that's in their mouth. What they've, uh, what they've used for evolution over thousands and thousands of years in order to survive is now actually killing them because of stuff that we've introduced into their ecosystem. So if you want to go to a zoo, make sure that they're good. Go online and find out if uh, they are accredited by the AZA. That's a really easy, simple step that you can do in order to support uh, wildlife. Another thing that you can do is when you're there, ask questions. These the zookeepers care about these animals so much. They, they, they really do. And when you are there, they're there in order to answer your questions. Ask them why these animals are here. Ask them uh, what's the next project that the that the zoo is working on. Ask them uh, if, this, if the species is endangered, why they're not active right now. You can ask them what their diet is. You can ask them when are the times that they feed them? How do we know that they're getting enrichment? These are all amazing questions that you can ask and get information about and it's just there you just have to ask for it so i'm just i'm just hoping that maybe just maybe i hope you guys understand that zoos aren't necessarily just these big bad corporations trying to take your money you know there are zoos out there that really care about wildlife there's a lot of zoos out there that care about wildlife and 
you know, I just I just want you guys to know that I, I hope that I shed some light on that um, I'll have some great links in the description so then you guys can read all about this shit So yeah zoos can be great and I think that a good way to end off this video is with what a, a quote that I really enjoy um, It's called it's a uh, people Don't love what they don't know and they can't love what they don't know squeeze <laughs> Okay, hey Matt uh, I'm a pretty big fan of your videos, by the way. Uh, that that voicemail line that was a uh, that was kind of shit, bro. I mean, it looks like you're hiding your videos, so you should probably smoke something before coming up with another one. But uh, you know, keep that shit up. Mm -hmm.